Hello, this is the next video in the four year series, mini series, if that's what you want to call it. I'm going to try to put out, you know, 10 to 20 different videos, sort of building up the four year series and proving a lot of theorems along with it. Here, um, I'm going back to basics. And some of the, the videos coming up, I always say, you know, well, using this trig identity, it becomes this. I thought, you know what, I'm going to do that quite often, so let me list out most of the trig identities that I'm going to use in the next several videos. And so that's where we are here. So here we have e to the i theta, that is cosine theta i sine theta. And this, you, if you do a Taylor's expansion on this, and then a Taylor expansion on each of these, you can, you'll can you see that they're equal. So I'm not going to prove that. You can, there's lots of videos out to do that. You know, and it seems like whenever you show proofs, it's like, how far do you go back? And so this is as far back as I'm going. We're going to assume that you know this, and if not, you have to look it up. So for theta, then we put an A plus B, so then it becomes this identity. But you know with since that's an exponent that becomes the product but then going back to this uh, identity you can put that in for each of these these e to the i b e to the i a now when we expand this out use the foil method or however you want to multiply it it and then combine the real components and the imaginary components we we get this I couldn't fit this on the page that's why you kind of see the white out there but this becomes this now we're we're finished because if you look at this identity so cosine of a plus b that's the real component of this and so that's equal to the real component of this and the imaginary component of this is equal to the imaginary component of that. So we get two identities out of this. We get the sum of angles, the cosine of the sum of angles and the sine of angles. And we get this. And that's based upon, you know, this identity. Now, we'll use this one for the next one. So cosine of 2x that's the same as the cosine of x plus x so then this becomes the cosine squared of x and this is the sine squared of x well and then the cosine squared plus sine squared equals one identity we can replace that with one minus sine squared of x and then this becomes minus two times sine squared of x and so you could subtract the 1 to the other side, divide the minus uh, 2 to the other side, and then we come up with this identity. This is often called a power reduction identity. Well, that also applies to uh, cosine of, of... Yeah, well, we can also, this where this is sine squared, we can do the same thing with cosine squared. Instead of replacing this, we replace this. So it's, it's the same thing here, but then we replace this with the 1 minus cosine squared, and then you have to distribute the negative, and that implies that we get this cosine, or the power reduction here. And in these videos, I'm going to have, like, the first video says F1, and this one says F2. And so in later videos, I'm going to say due to F2 or F1 or F3. And uh, it'll make it, refer, you know, proving these theorems a lot easier, being able to refer back to them. So here we have, we, we just did the cosine of the sum of angles. And this is the cosine of sum of angles, but this one is negative. So this one becomes this here, and then this one becomes this one. But the, since that's the minus, it's you know it's like a plus or minus b. That minus b here is um, you can take 
take the minus out and bring it, put it here, which then makes that a plus. So we get this relationship. But here, you know, we get this cancels with that, and we're left with two of these. So we have two times the cosine of A, cosine of B. And then if we divide two to both sides, then we get this relationship. And we're going to also use that in the next video. So here we can uh, we we have the cosine a cosine b. In the next theorem, we're going to try to do the sine a sine b. But we start with this here, which is very similar to what we started with up here. And so this piece becomes this based on the previous identity, and this becomes this. You know, we have the minus there. And of course we have the one half. Now we get a cancellation. We get this piece cancels with this piece. You know, it's a plus and then that's a minus. And then we get two pluses there, which says we get two sine A, sine B, those two. And then the one half cancel, and then we're left with the sine of A, sine of B equal to this. So that's the next identity that we're going to use in the next video in this little mini series now so what we have here is a cosine a cosine b sine a sine b now we need a sine b cos i mean sine a cosine b so then we'll have all the bases covered so here if we look at the sine of these two angles then this one becomes this based on the first page this one becomes this based on the first page remember that the that it's a a plus a minus b and so this becomes sine of minus b but that can be brought out front and just call it b then we get some cancelizations that um, here we have plus sine b cosine a and we have minus sine b cosine a so those cancel and we're left with two of these so that's what we get then the one half distributes in and we get that is equal to this and we get this product sine a cosine b is equal to this and that's all i have for today we're going to use each of these uh, trig identities in the next video then on the uh, Fourier series um, but prior to that, I'll probably need to prove the Lindenberg Central Limit Theorem. And I've been wanting to do that for the past couple weeks and been putting it off. And I'll try to do that for the next video. So that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.